Hello everyone, my name is Gao Niu. Uh, I'm happy to be here along with Meng Nong Xu. Uh, we're here to present agent-based agent -based queuing model for call center agent optimal allocation paper. Uh, this is a joint work with Dr. Jay Balibalu, and it is sponsored by Jeanette and the Mark Goldenson Center for Actual Re Research at the University of Connecticut. Um, first, I would like to go through an introduction describing the problem we're facing. Then we'll go through an example uh, for the model using some numerical values. Then we'll describe a formularic uh, way to describe the model, then using it for the optimization purposes so that the call center can be reached to some optimization to improving, uh, improving their efficiency. In the end, we'll present our results as well as some possible future research directions. Now I'm going to talk about the introduction of the model. The model we built is an agent-based queuing model with simple decision-making process. A call is connected to, to the call center. The agent will pick up the call anonymously and randomly. Each call is answered on a first-come, first-served basis. All agents are capable of handling all incoming calls. Number of the agents optimization process is proposed and verified. Optimization criteria is that the average waiting time is less than the desired threshold. There are three parameters that we will fit into the model. The number of incoming calls, we assume it follows the Poisson distribution. The call length, we assume it follows the log normal distribution. And the abandon rate, we compute the abandon rate for every single call from a linear regression. Then we, with these three parameters, we are able to run our Monte Carlo queuing simulation model and get, a, a, get estimation of the customer's waiting time. Then we compare the, est we compare the estimation with our evaluation criteria. If that, uh, if that estimation does not satisfy the evaluation criteria, then we will go into the optimization process. We increase or decrease the number of agents and iterate this process until, we ha until the results satisfy the evaluation criteria. Then we will have our optimal staffing level. Now let's look at this simple example, a small call center with only three claim professionals or agents. The first table shows the agent's status. Uh, zero here means there's zero minutes left for the claim professional to be free. The second table is the uh, number of calls which we received within this minute. Uh, at the very beginning, we assume we don't, re we don't have any call, uh, and call length is free. Uh, it, we don't have any call length as well. After one minute, we receive two calls. This two is coming from the Poisson distributions. And one call is going to take three minutes, and another call is going to take five minutes. Three and five are coming from the log normal distribution. We then randomly assign these two calls to two claim professionals. In this case, the second claim professional will take that five minutes call, and the third claim professional will take that 30 minutes call, three minutes call. After one minute, uh, five becomes four, and three becomes two. There are only four minutes left for the second claim professional to be free, and two minutes left for the third claim professional to be free. And we, we, should, uh, and we receive another call with, uh, with the expected length of six minutes. One is coming from the Poisson distribution, and six is, from, is coming from that log normal distribution. This call, will be, this call will be picked up by the first claim professional, since he is free now. After one minute, six becomes five, four becomes four. 4 becomes 3, and 2 becomes 1. Now all of the claim professionals are occupied now. We receive another call with the expected length of 4 minutes. The question is, who is going to take this call? The answer is the next, the next free claim, claim professional will, this, will take this call. In this case, this uh, claim professional 3 will take this call in 1 minute. So this one becomes a 1 minute waiting time. Well, thanks, Meng Nong, for giving us a um, simple, um, smaller number of a call center. Now, if we put these numbers in a larger scale, for example, we have more times to do the simulation and more agents. Now, this will be the structure we're fitting into a larger scale. So the purpose for this is now we have simulated the number of calls, and for every single call, we simulated the call length. Now we can calculate for the uh, waiting time matrix for every single incoming call. Then. Uh, all these parameters will vary by hour by hour for each day, and for each different day will be different. For example, Monday may have a little less number of incoming calls compared with Friday, and also uh, noon time, maybe 12 o'clock, uh, noon uh, 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, there is a higher, uh, on average, number of incoming calls compared with the afternoon or early in the morning. 
Next, I would like to propose a uh, model formulation. This is based on a matrix structure. The reason we want to propose the model this way is because, uh, first of all, when we created this model, we're using R. And the in R, using matrix for the calculation, is actually much a efficient way than using all kinds of conditional or if statements. And uh, also, this way is making the calculation in the future for the programmer is much easier for them to understand. Now, we want to first define several functions within this matrix structure. First, A and B, uh, assuming they are both column matrix, then we're using this T represent is a transpose. Then sort A is really, uh, if you have an array of uh, numbers, you're sorting them from the smallest value to the largest value. The reason this function is important is because when we have a whole bunch of uh, incoming, when we have a whole bunch of workload, which means how many minutes left for a cost to finish, we need a sort function such that we will be able to find the smallest number. If it's zero, that means there is no waiting time. Then there is the incoming call can be assigned directly. And if it's a one or two, that will be the waiting time for the incoming calls. And the truncate is uh, it will put a matrix to a uh, m by one uh, structure, which means we don't need that many uh, long number of calls because not all the calls does have a waiting time. So we need to truncate some of them. Max is really a function, uh, have a threshold. If I have an array of A and M, now all the value is going to be kept at M. Actually, we're only using this because we are assuming all this workload is going to be decreased by one after one minute is spending. Therefore, uh, our, the workload have always be positive. If some number minus one, if it was supposed to be zero, but minus one is negative, we have to cap it at zero. And concatenate, or short for cut A and B, is really just putting two matrix together into one. Next, I would like to define some of the parameters we're using for calculation and waiting time. First is the workload. Workload is really how long it takes for a staff finish his uh, current call. So if a workload is zero, that means it's currently available. If workload is 10, that means he needs 10 minutes to finish his call, or 10 seconds. And then workload 0m is really in the very beginning, t represent the time. It's in the very beginning how many or m number of agents that's their uh, workload. is actually a zero matrix. All the numbers are zero, assuming everyone just started working. IC, short for uh, incoming calls, and AC, short for abandoned calls. Uh, it is a parameter related with time t. Um, then the number of incoming calls will be simulated based on a Poisson distribution, and the Poisson parameter will be uh, based on hour by hour and a day by day. And uh, abandoned calls is going to be based on the waiting time. Actually, the, we actually assumed a linear regression. The longer the waiting time, the higher the probability uh, the call is going to be abandoned, which is, I think it's reasonable because if you're going to wait on the phone for an hour, it, it most likely you're actually going to handle, you're also going to uh, abandon the call. But if it's shorter and there's a higher probability, you're going to stick to the call. Then there's also HT, which is shorter for handle time. And this HT is uh, two dimension. Every single call, incoming call, will have a handle time, which is simulate how long this call is going to finish. And also SA is um, speed to answer. In another word, is the waiting time. Um, this is ultimately the parameter we're trying to calculate and use because we really just care about the waiting time for every single call. And it's also a two-dimensional is in terms of T and in terms of every single incoming calls. Well, some of the waiting time for the incoming call is going to be zero, but uh, m most of them or some of them are going to be non-zero. Non Next one, I want to define some of the recursive formula based on the parameter definitions we have proposed. The first one is workload. Now, for every single second, the workload is going to be dynamically changing. In the very beginning, the workload is going to be zero for every single employee. Then the workload is going to, we're presenting a uh, recursive formula. The workload for the next seconds or minutes, it depends on the previous one. So the first chunk of formula says the workload is going to be minus 1. Because if you have 10 minutes to finish a call, in the next minute it's going to be, become 9. So it's a workload previous and minus 1. Now it's capped at 0 is because if it's 0, now you're going to have some negative values. Capped at 0 will keep all the workloads to positive numbers. Then you want to sort your workload. Because only the workload are very small number. It's either 0 or some small number. Then that will be the, uh, that will be the kind of incoming calls time going to add on top of that. Because think about it, you have some uh, three incoming calls. And if you have someone are zero, you're going to put this three incoming calls to the people who are available immediately. Then this HT is the handle time. 
And now we're using IC minus AC, which is almost like a net incoming call, which is the number of incoming calls minus the abandoned calls. Now the second chunk of formula is a uh, speed to answer at the time zero. Now um, at the time zero, it depends. Really depends on how many calls are actually coming in the very beginning, or depends on the net incoming call, IC zero minus AC zero. Now if this net incoming call is less than M, which is the number of employees you have, then there's no waiting there's no waiting time because the number of calls is less than the agents you can handle. Now if your number of incoming calls is greater than the number of agents you're having, then you will have some um, a waiting time for the people who are actually the net extra on top of your number of agents. And the last one is the recursive formula for speed to answer or waiting time. It's uh, first of all, it's uh, we'll only capture the net incoming calls waiting time. If it's abandoned, we won't actually simulate their waiting time. Now, that formula is based on, uh, first of all, is going to be on uh, your workload. Now you want to sort your workload. If your workload have a whole bunch of zero, then this incoming call won't have waiting time. If your smallest number for the waiting time, say one, one, two, now these three calls, when they come in, that will become one, one, two minutes for them to wait because those are the first available staff they're going to have. Then you only, you want to truncate your uh, workload at the number of your net incoming calls because this uh, speed to answer matrix is capturing every single incoming call. Therefore, you only need that length of number of calls uh, for incoming. Therefore, by going through all these methods, we'll actually capture the matrix for every single call and we'll be able to calculate for their waiting time. I will talk about how we get the optimal staffing level in the next few slides. Uh, our Optimization criteria for this model is service level. It's a probability measure. A 90% service level in 30 seconds means 90% of the calls are picked up within 30 seconds. We use bisection method and step by step method to get that minimum number of staff such that the average speed to answer the call uh, will reach into the service level for all periods of time. Now let's look at the results of the bisection method. For example, if the desired service level at 60 seconds is 68% to 72%, and our current staff level is 70. In the first iteration, uh, we get the service level at 45% uh, with the current staffing level 70. 45% is lower than the target interval. In this case, we will update, uh, the, in the next round, the lower bound would be 70, and upper bound will just double the current staff level when 40. In this case, the midpoint is 105, and with this 105 people, the service level is 100%, which is higher than the, which is higher than the target interval. We will update the upper bound and get a new get a new midpoint, 78 people. Uh, the new service level under 78 people, 87 people, is 95%. So still higher than what we want. We just do it again and again, repeat the process, and now with 79 people the service level is 71, just fall into that uh, target interval. Then we consider these 79 people as our optimal result. Uh, this this bisection method is based on 100 simulation. Uh, we will increase the number of simulation in the step by step method to get a more refined result. Once we have the preliminary optimization result based on the bisection method, we will apply a step by step method based on 1000 iteration to get more refined optimization uh, staff level. The step by method increase or decrease the number of staff by one unit every time. If we apply the bisection method with a thousand iteration, we will generate a very similar result with a combination of those two, but it's definitely going to take longer time. So bisection method is actually for efficiency and step by is for accuracy. Now I would like to go through the results we're having based on our model and the process we have described. It has to from Monday to Friday, but now there's too many numbers. We just presented our Monday's results. Based on the current staff level, start at 8 o'clock has 40, 58, 71, and we have simulated our service level at 60 seconds, 99.98%, etc. Now this is a calibrated model, which means when we have a uh, number of staff level put into our model, we are able to produce the, the surface level fairly close to what actually happened with the call center, the data where actually uh, the, the calibrated data will come from. Now, once we have a calibrated data, we want to use our op optimization process to try to 
uh, pr provide some numbers to the call center so that they can better manage their call center. Now we're proposing an optimal staff level. Start from 28 and 55, 73. Now with this optimal staff level, we're able to produce a stable service level throughout the whole day, ranging from uh, roughly from 70 to 75 percent um, service level. Now actually, when we did this optimization, our target interval was 7 to se 70 to 72 percent. But in the end, we actually end up with, uh, after we simulate 10,000 times or 1,000 times when the number converges, we're actually ending with sometimes more than 72 percent. That's because when we trying to find the optimal uh, number of staff, which is the integer, we always are trying to go to the upper bound if there is a selection, say, for example, 72, 73, we will choose a 73. That, so that our result is going to be more conservative. That's why, in the end, our service level will always be a little bit bigger than the confidence interval we're having. Now, let's look at the results of what we propose as optimal. Uh, the blue bar is the current staff level, and the yellow bar is what we propose as optimal results. What we can find out is uh, in the early morning from 8 to 9, uh, we, de we have more people, actually, than we need. But in, the er but in the late afternoon, we have less people than we need. We can achieve these optimal results by rearranging our working schedule. For example, not letting everyone come early in the morning. As you can see, the current total staff level, which is already low for all employees, is 750 at 3. And the optimal staff level is only 739. Optimization is not simply increasing staff, it's a strate strategic resource management. The future research. There are several different areas we can extend our research in the future. For example, there could be a multiple line of business, uh, like the incoming call could be claims, uh, could be for marketing, could be for technology, and also multiple skill sets of the employee. Maybe a certain employee can only take care of the claims call or the technology call, or uh, they could be due, this uh, could be due to the reason that they need a license or they need a certain hours of training. And also the call center experience level. For example, some uh, call center staff, they might be here for a longer time, then they're more experienced. They can handle certain calls in, in a much faster or efficient way. Th that will require the parameters we're having for our model to be adjusted. And also the, our queuing application could apply to other area other than the call center. For example, DMV, they have different types of people doing business over DMV, and it seems like there has been always a waiting or queuing in there, and hopefully this model can also help them to optimize their arrangement with their staff, with their staff training or uh, management. In the end, I want to make the acknowledgement. Uh, this research is a part of applied research work undertaken by the Goldenson Center for Actuarial Research at the University of Connecticut. And we always strive to deliver research work with implementable solutions based on real life issues faced by industry by using faculty members and graduate students in collaboration with industry professionals. Thank you for watching.